Hi everybody, good morning. It's Erin Scott here. It is Sunday, May 23rd, and we're gonna be looking at the full moon total lunar eclipse that's coming up this week. It's happening on Wednesday the 26th. It's happening in the morning, Eastern time. Um, we're also gonna look at the symbology, and I'm gonna pull up the Sabian symbol for the moon's placement at five degrees, 25 minutes Sag. Um, and also the south node because the moon is conjunct the south node these are working together there is some sort of a reboot happening here there's a clarification happening I think that there's going to be shocking revelations for a lot of people I think a lot of people who have been because we're talking about this full moon happening in Sag, right? So the sun is shining on the moon, but it's a total lunar eclipse. So the earth is going to be blocking the sun's light. Something about what you believed about people, about society, about the world, about life, something is going to interrupt that. And it's going to instigate a reboot. And this can be shocking. I think for some people, there's going to be such a level of revelation, insight, some sort of a recalibration of the mind whereby you might have believed something your entire life. And, and you might specifically, too, when we look at the symbol, you'll know what I'm talking about. You might have believed something about a particular group where you thought you belonged or you thought that they were resonant with you or you thought that the intellect was of a certain caliber or whatever it might be but there's something that comes to light that will clarify something for you where you will have to start thinking for yourself because the group might disappoint there's going to be something coming to light in some cases this will be teachers gurus There'll be something that will create some level of disconnect within your own structure of belief, and it can create a withdrawal in some cases. I think for some people, they're going to be pulling back from religious uh, you know, philosophies that they've been part of you know, maybe their entire life. For other people, they're going to be pulling back from teachers that they've been following for years, this kind of thing. There, but there's going to be some sort of clarity, revelation, I think probably a stark revelation, and there's going to be a reboot, okay? Because the moon is with the south node, this is definitively talking about, indeed, something does need to be let go of with regards to what you held as truth. So what is it that you're holding as truth? Something is going to wake you up that, no, the truth that I thought was correct or solid isn't. <laughs> it isn't. And for some people that are already in a precarious mental state, for example, or an emotional state, they might be in a state of instability at some level. This can create um, a tower kind of an event here where they freak out because something, something that they didn't realize was there is there. Okay, so that being said, before we talk about the rest of the dynamics, let's look at these symbols, okay? Let's take a peek here. So you can see that the moon, the, the point of this full moon, the sun will be at 5 degrees, 25 minutes Gemini, the moon at 5 degrees, 25 minutes Sag. Here we have the south node at 10 degrees, 43 minutes, okay? So we're going to look at these two symbols together. Uh, first, we're going to look at the moon at 5 to 6 degrees Sagittarius, which is what we have here, okay? You, I'm going to pull my highlighter to the side. Um, you can see here a game of cricket, a game of cricket. The keynote, the development of skill in group situations, testing collective goals. Any society is built on the interplay between groups of people each group united by an at least temporary aim. The individual person within the group is assigned a particular role in the play. The definite rules have to be obeyed. The game teaches not only personal skill but fairness and cooperation. Where this symbol is found, the value of making individual will or ego will subservient to the collective cultural patterns is emphasized. 
Several symbols belonging to scene 17 Sag relate to games or group rituals because these are abstracted from everyday social behavior and used as educative means to develop group consciousness and an individual sense of responsibility to the group. This is the first symbol of the 50th fivefold sequence. It refers to the importance of developing group solidarity. So that being said, what we're looking at here is a revelation about the group, the beliefs that you had about the group. Now for some of you, you are involved in big groups. There can be Facebook groups, for example. These can be Facebook groups that are teaching groups that might have tens of thousands or, who knows, hundreds of thousands of followers, right? These kinds of things, there's going to be some clarity about res resonant, resonance or dissonance with the particular group or the teacher or the teachings, okay? Potentially, potentially. So this is all acting on behalf of waking you up, right? You know, nature only operates functionally. So whatever is occurring here between belief structures of the mind and the operating system, day-to-day -day operating system of the mind, um, whatever's happening here is helping you to move into the nodal axis of Gemini. Your own personal thoughts, awarenesses, curiosities, understandings, language, this is really about thinking for yourself versus following belief, following what you're taught, what you're fed, okay? With regards to the south node, we want to go between 10 and 11, which is here, okay? So let's read this, and then we'll kind of talk about how they're correlated. Let me put my highlighter to the side here, okay? So this is the south node of the moon that is connected in, it's enmeshed within the rebooting uh, that's happening with this full moon uh, total lunar eclipse. In the left section of an archaic temple, a lamp burns in a container shaped like a human body. The keynote, the value of the return to the body advocated by modern thinkers in order to balance the stress on intellectuality and objective consciousness. This sequence of five symbols confronts us with rather mysterious images, which nevertheless can be given very profound and important meanings for today. The original formulation of this symbol spoke to physical enlightenment, but what seems to be implied in contemporary terms is the need to rely upon the wisdom of the body of which so much is made in sensitivity training and gestalt psychotherapy. This refers to the process of deconditioning a consciousness that has become a prisoner of intellectual concepts with their total reliance on quantitative values, objectivity, and conformity to the official patterns of our culture. I'm going to repeat that sentence because this is really the meat of what we're talking about here. Okay, so I'm looking right here at this last sentence. It's critical because this is part of what's going to be, there's some revelation to occur. Okay, and it's going to be at different levels for different people. You are all individual. This refers to the process of deconditioning a consciousness that has become a prisoner of intellectual concepts with their total reliance on quantitative values, objectivity, and conformity to the official patterns of our culture. This revelation here is a disconnect from buying into the fed narrative, to the narrative that is what modern humanity has been indoctrinated into. And I say that with the clear understanding from my perspective that humans move in this direction. In other words, where the collective sits at is a result of where the human mind in its evolutionary process, it's what it would have developed and built at this time. In other words, extreme hierarchies and dominance constructs and the continuation of warring constructs, okay? 
uh, manipulation through power dynamics and the consolidation of, of wealth, because wealth equals power in this modern context with which we're living this human experience, okay? So with all that being said, this is about disconnecting from the norms that you believe is just the way life is or just the way it is. So this is part of, I would contend, the beginning portion of a radicalized, individuated mind that is occurring. Individuated yet unified. See, that's the paradox. Because the more we become individuated, the more we become unified, believe it or not. So this is a, this is a significant process this week, I think. I think a lot of people are going to be... Some people are going to be continuing along their journey with new revelations to come. Other people are going to be radically waking up. And I think some people, too, are going to be having potentially even like a psychotic break because what they, what they asserted was true and foundational in their reality, something will show them that it's not. And that instability with what they created the truth around will devastate some people. It will create some sort of a psychic break, potentially. Let's read this last sentence here. This represents the first stage of a challenging process. Here we go. I didn't even read this before, okay? Uh, the 51st sequence of five symbols. It stresses the importance for many individuals of relying upon organismic responses in meeting life's challenges. What this is talking about is embodiment. This is about listening to your body. It's about being grounded in your body. This is about allowing yourself to be human with the sensory experiences activated and operating. In other words, stop living in the mind. Stop living in concepts. This is about embodiment of those concepts. It's about assimilation and actualization of that which you speak is true or say is true, walking the talk. But there's this whole aspect here about living in concepts where there's a total disconnect with reality. And part of what I see here with this particular week's full moon eclipse, everybody, and again, I mean, the title, the, the, the um, association, the, the, the label of this particular moon is a super blood moon. So it's a super moon, which means it's closer to the earth. It looks bigger. It appears bigger. It has more of a gravitational pull on the waters within us. So, and it's a blood moon. So, you know, I mean, there's something here about the blood moving, the blood shifting tides, right? Um, okay, beauty. So let's kind of look, I'm going to keep my highlighter here in the middle. Let me just take a look. I mean, there's a lot to talk about here, actually. Let's take a peek at, at Pluto here. Pluto is talking about transformation of uh, value system, transformation of your sense of self-worth, transformation of money, income, savings, what you deem is security for yourself. So how is it that you identify security? What is it the, that the collective tells you? What's the narrative that you're fed with regards to security. How is it that fear can be evoked with regards to what the collective does with regards to fears that people hold with regards to security? And by the way, this is a very normal human situation here. Why? Because it's a foundational aspect of, of human need. We need water, we need food, we need shelter. These are basic uh, necessities for the human experience, yes? So how do you catalyze fear in people? You threaten water, you threaten food, and you threaten home, property, shelter, etc. Right? So if there's ways to make money off of this stuff for people that have the power positions right now, then they're going to do it, okay? But see, the thing is, is that there's full potential here. We live in a uh, manifested reality, which is birthed from consciousness, that is inherently pure potentiality. Now, in this human condition, are there certain bounds and, uh, and um, boundaries to the, uh, to the form of this life? Yeah, there are. There are. 
So is there pure potentiality that can become manifested in this existence? Yes, but it's also playing by the rules of this uh, reality as well. I think a lot of people don't like to hear that, but if you look at natural systems, if you understand how natural systems operate, you understand that it's both and. So you're working within a bigger, broader story, a bigger, broader context, and the organizing principles of those living systems. So it's important, a development of your empowerment is natural, and the understanding of context is also natural. So you can utilize that to actually instigate new forms, new realities, new communities, new societies, new humanity, new earth. All of these things can be manifested, but you're working with the greater context of living systems in this reality. So it's important to have a humble yet empowered perspective. It's the paradox. It's both and. So here there are changes happening with regards to uh, your sense of self-worth and what you believe is possible with regards to your physical reality. Notice that Capricorn, Saturn, is ruling this area. There's a transformation in regards to how you view issues of stability, security, money, your sense of self-worth with regards to physical reality. Saturn can talk about our karmic reality here, our physical form reality as a physical body, as a physical human in this physical earth, okay? Um, and, you know, more to talk about with regards to what is really the physical, but that's, you know, but this is, this is what this is talking about. There's a transformation in how you view or how you interpret or how you relate to or how you engage with, how empowered you stand in creating your own reality. Yes? So this is important. The other thing that we have here, and you know, Mars is at 20 degrees, essentially it is within a six degree orb of, you know, exact uh, opposition here. Mars is in the eighth house. It's ruled by Cancer, the moon, which is having the eclipse activated. What this means is that there's a reboot instigating or uh, impacting the psyche. There's a reboot happening with belief structure, with what you believe is the truth of life, of, you know, whatever. The, the, what's the truth of your past and how does the past get replicated to continue the pattern into your future? Or do you stop it? Do you actually cease it? The activation, you know, Mars in the 8th house can be quite good. Even though Mars in Cancer, you know, it can be... Um, it, uh, I'm, I'm blanking on the word, I apologize, but cancer can have difficult, or excuse me, Mars can have difficulty in cancer because, you know, this is a water sign, this is fire. Fire wants to take action here, to move and to create some sort of uh, progress in some direction, you know, moving in regards to passion, for example. And by the way, we'll talk about that as well here. Um, but it can be difficult when dealing with a water sign. So there can be manipulations that occur here. There can be passive aggressiveness, for example, when Mars is in Cancer. Um, the word I was looking for is debilitated, right? So, But I don't like to talk about that. Mars is looked at as debilitated in Cancer, but I really don't prefer to talk in those terms or to actually organize my thoughts in those terms. Why? Because there's a whole lot of people with Mars in Cancer, and it's correct. It's correct. It's correct for your growth to have this because there's growth to do with it. So there's lots to say about that. Maybe that'll be another video. But with regards to Mars in the 8th house, brilliant. Why? Because Mars wants to take action with regards to finding the truth, getting to the root. When it comes to Cancer 8th house, this is about getting to the root of your foundations, your past, your upbringing, your childhood, your mother, your feelings, your inner realities, your patterns. So what are your, your emotionally reactive patterns? There's a prompting here during this process. This is for the next six months, by the way. You know, this activation here, we're talking about for the next three to six months, 
this is activated for you. It's a process that's happening in the background and it will be to your optimal benefit to participate in this process because that way you can harness, utilize, drive the energy for optimal function. But Mars in the 8th is brilliant. Mars in Cancer in the 8th is brilliant because there's a charge, a drive, a passion to move toward getting to the root, getting to the core, getting to the truth, getting to what's underneath, you know? And with the opposition to Pluto, this has to do with this transformation of your sense of self-worth, letting go of what you were taught to believe about yourself. Really, that's what the South Node in the first house is talking about. Letting go of who you think you are and becoming the potential of who you can be. And there's a, there's a natural transformational process happening with regards to what you think is reality for you, what you think your worth is, what does it mean to be safe and secure, how is it that you do have the ability to create exactly what it is you need with the current constraints in this current reality. Get creative here. There, there's a possibility to get creative here. Let's take a look at that actually. If we go to the fifth house of individuation, this is the house of Leo and the Sun. Here is where Chiron is. So yes, time, energy, attention, going into healing you, your skills, your gifts, your talents, the truth of who you are, your character, your persona, your characteristics that are inherent to you. There's a healing process underway and guess what? It's ruled by Mars. So this process where you are healing as a person is connected to the uh, movement and action and drive to get to the root of things, to your own psychology, to your own pain patterning, to your own wound signatures. What, it, what are your automatic patterns with regards to mind, feeling? Here there's an emotional patterning that's definitively we're looking at here, especially with the moon's eclipse. Because the rebooting of this sense of self and your construct of identity is linked to understanding the depth of your past, understanding the depth of your story, understanding your shadowed components, the ones that you segment or attempt to segment. And it's connected to your individuation process. I don't think I can... Uh, articulate how powerful this is actually. It's, it's big. This is a very significant chart. Like I always do, I didn't an analyze it before recording. I always record it live. So this is big everybody. Look at what we have down here. A 111 Jupiter, right? So we have 111 here with Jupiter in Pisces. It's here for this two and a half month cycle. It is in, at the end of this third house, but very close to this IC point, okay? Um, this is about belief systems that you hold in the mind, and look at where Saturn is. The reason why I say it like that is because we have this, trans, we have this Saturnian transformation of value system, of what we uh, believe we can create, what we believe we uh, need to survive and thrive and feel safe and secure and have firmament under our feet and foundations, etc., set up, established. This is the Saturnian transformation. And here Saturn is activating some level of maturity, some level of uh, responsibility and accountability with regards to the way your mind is operating. So how is it that your mind thinks about things? How does your mind identify things? How is it that you're looking at something? You're looking at people out in the town square or, you know, out at the park, and you're assessing them, you're judging them, you're, you have some analysis of what's going on. How is it that you're doing that? What themes are activated for you? Those people are stupid, they're screwing up, they're, uh, oh, look at them, they're fabulous. You know, it could be that there's other things that are activated here. There's going to be some level of filter which you are here to recognize. And indeed, the belief system is Neptunian. 
So something about the Neptunian belief system is activated with this particular eclipse. It's squaring the, the moon and the sun, right? Jupiter is squaring moon and sun. This T-square is in fact catalyzing some level of recognition of belief system. So in other words, and some of you might not understand what I'm talking about when I'm talking about belief systems. We all hold them. We all hold them in every single level of our life. There's some construct, a paradigm and a worldview that we hold as truth. This is how life operates in this way. This is how people are. This is how uh, my life is. This is, who, this is who I believe I am. This is who I believe my mother is. This is who I believe my family members are, etc. You have to understand that there's big work there's big, the square between the eclipsed moon and Jupiter is no small task. There's some level of delusion. The Neptunian function, because it rules the immaterial realm, this is specifically talking about some of the normal aspects, the things that are ruled by Neptune, which is confusion, uncertainty, delusion, deception, illusion, living in fantasy versus living and seeing reality applying a whitewashed spiritual veil over reality versus actually being willing to see what's there. The Mars in the eighth is willing to see what's there. Are you going to transform? Are you going to be willing to go into your past? Are you going to be willing to understand, for some of you, this is going to be buried anger at your mother. This is going to be buried anger at your upbringing. There's going to be resentments that are going to be accessed here and understanding that you're holding them and seeing them, recognizing them, and then learning to have conversations here to allow the free flow of this energetic so it's not bound up inside of you, governing and driving your patterns unconsciously. So this way you can actually be awake and aware of present moment reality and you can own you can own your own anger and you can utilize it, you can redirect it. You can understand it from a new perspective. You can see things from a higher perspective. So belief structures, Neptunian belief structures, things about religion too, for some of you, there's going to be realizations that will come about with regards to your religion that you adopt, that you grew up with perhaps. Are you going to be willing to transform your value system according to the natural evolutionary impulse of change that's occurring? Or are you going to grip tightly to a system of belief, perhaps a religious belief, that is showing you that there are holes that are asking to be uh, questioned? Okay, so some people with this activation here, Jupiter squaring this particular eclipse, this can look like, again, I'll say it again, especially with Mars in the 8th, this can look like psyches breaking. This can look like people flipping out. Okay, this can look like um, a lot of repressed anger emerging. Do you understand? There can be a lot of projection here as well. There can be, for some individuals, a lot of projection at women. So there can be a lot of this inner anger that they're, they're projecting at uh, their family members, at women, okay? And this is all about their own feelings. Do you understand? This is anger within. Mars in the 8th in Cancer operates in different ways. It depends on you as a distinct individual, and it depends on where you are in your evolutionary journey and your level of conscious awareness. So all of those aspects bring clarity to how this is going to activate your process during this eclipse. And we can't go into all of them because it depends on you as a distinct individual, right? For those of you who are interested in getting your natal analysis, in-depth analysis done, you can see the links below. So for some people, there's going to be a whole lot of projection of their own garbage, of their own patterning, of their own shadow outward. And it's going to be directed at 
women. It's going to be directed at family. It's going to be directed at mother. It's going to be directed at, I don't know, the feelings of the spouse. So there can be a whole lot of crap that emerges. There can be a whole lot of manipulation. Eighth house Pluto Scorpio can manipulate, especially if we're talking about some level of passive aggressiveness here. So at which level here are you experiencing abuse? Some of you might be experiencing violent abuse, physical abuse, sexual abuse. Some of you might be experiencing mental abuse, emotional abuse, gaslighting, etc. Do you understand? So it's going to be different. And we're all experiencing some level of abuse, believe it or not. At some level within us, there's some abusive uh, functioning within the consciousness structure that's here to be released, rehold, healed, eased, popped into its natural alignment and functioning. So at what level is there abuse within your own mind, within your own psyche? Unconscious to you, perhaps, right? Most of this stuff is unconscious to people. So you're going to have to be willing to get still, to get quiet. And in fact, look at this, everybody. Pluto, Scorpio, is ruling the 12th house of your consciousness. And here's where Pluto is living. So your sense of reality and what you value in this world. So are you valuing material possessions? Are you valuing money, the savings, the 401k, security for the future? Are you, what is it that you're valuing? Are you valuing your career and your goals and your aspirations and the desire for, uh, to be successful? Okay. Well, it's changing. Okay. So hang on for the ride. It's changing if you allow it. And the thing that's changing it is your consciousness. So your consciousness is changing. Allow yourself to change. Again, because this moon-sun opposition squaring Jupiter is activated where it's happening, notice how inherently with the moon-sun horizontal axis, we have uh, Jupiter at the root system, which is your feelings. What this is, is your belief systems matter to you. It's very personal to you. Do you understand? So you better believe there's going to be a lot of anger coming out at your inner structure that's asking to change. Everybody listening to my voice now, you all hold certain beliefs. Some of you are going to have spiritual beliefs, religious beliefs, dogmatic assertions about how, who God is, how God operates, etc., 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 okay? Based on texts and millennia of information, okay? Your consciousness, whether you like it or not, is asking for a transformation to occur. Your consciousness, and this is for all of us, okay? But those that hold on to emotionally tightly held belief structures that help you feel safe and secure, you better believe there's going to be a whole lot of anger to rise up and out of that space of meaning for you. So there's a lot of emotional attachment, in other words, about the revelation that might be occurring that can create, you know, anger. Anger that can be projected out. For those of you in relate, this is what I'm going to say, okay? Take what I'm saying, everybody, please, with a grain of salt, always. Take what everybody says with a grain of salt. But this is what I want to say to some of you. For those of you, you who are in relationships, where where there's abuse okay there's either emotional abuse psychological abuse physical or sexual abuse for those of you that are enmeshed in a relationship that is abusive um you know you're gonna want to number one start to you have to step into your power it's time number two you're gonna have to uh know that you have the skills, the intellect, the ability, the resources, the resilience to move yourself into a new reality. Let yourself change. Because otherwise, you know, this can look uh, ugly for some people. Um, and you're not, you're not, it's not your path to uh, perpetuate the abuse signatures. 
It is your life path. If you hold a a natal chart signature, a blueprint, okay? For those of you, we all hold blueprints. We all, we all are living a particular storyline here, but we're not stuck in operating in a certain way with the dynamics within our blueprint. We are here to evolve the patterns into health and wholeness, into natural optimal alignment. We are not to perpetuate the abuse. And the more we find that we're choosing unconsciously to continue abuse signatures, the more you are perpetuating the past. But it's your obligation to create the future with a new orientation. You're here to become aware. You're here to participate in your health, wholeness, and healing. It takes, it's difficult, especially if some of the natal signatures are, are tough. I've worked with a lot of clients who have very intense um, abuse uh, narratives that they're playing out in this life, you know, and they're not being punished because of those signatures. It's not their fault that they were born with these signatures. It simply is. It is. Is it part of a longer term karmic process? Sure. But that does not indicate that that karmic process is to continue. This is about the transformation of consciousness. Let yourself release the old belief systems, paradigms, and worldviews that you cling to in order to feel safe. But the safety, sweeties, is a delusion. It's an illusion. It's not correct. It's not true. It's not to say that Neptune Pisces, uh, Jupiter in Neptune Pisces, is not doesn't have beautiful function. It does. But in this particular case, we're talking about something else. We're talking about another aspect of this functioning. The 111 does inherently indicate as well a portal. There is a portal. There's an opportunity to break old systems of patterning based on your belief systems of mind. So are you going to move in the direction of your own transformation? Are you going to succumb to the consciousness transformation that's inherently activated? Are you going to be able to become empowered, Pluto, in your physical Capricorn uh, existence in this life? Your physical existence. This is the house of Taurus, Venus, the Earth. This is the grounded, rooted self sinking its taproot into the soil, drinking up nutrients. This is feeling grounded. This is a fixed sign here. So the transformation requires bravery and courage and willingness to break fixed orientations here. Can you do it? Saturn can be micro-focused on things. You know, this Pluto is now retrograde, so this is about deep internal transformation. So tra change your physical... Change how your relationship is to this physical world. Understand things from the greater, grander, broader, holistic perspective. Move toward clarity about your patterns, your psyche, your stories, the narratives, the wound patterning. Through different iterations of life streams, different life streams. There's lots here. There's a lot of baggage here. So go there. Get curious about it. Have fun with the curiosity. It doesn't have to be this heavy burden. It can actually be joyful to actually understand the self from the deeper perspective. This is easier for some of us. It's harder for others of us. For some of us, we have Scorpio Plutonic signatures that allow a delightful dive. For others, it's definitely more stressful because it feels more mysterious, it feels darker, it feels scarier. But the monster is always bigger when you don't, when you keep that clo closet closed. <laughs> you know, it's a matter of just opening the door and having a conversation with whoever the boogeyman is for you. Because ultimately, it's all you. This is all you anyway. So you're having to confront yourself. You're having to own your own processes here of anger, resentment, passion. The other thing that I wanted to mention here is that with Pluto in the second house opposing Mars in the eighth, 
This can also speak to issues of passion, right? Now, passion could be sexual passion, emotionally held uh, sexual passion. Because of the eclipse, keep in mind the eclipsed moon is ruling this space where Mars is, it can be that a sexual relationship will be eclipsed out. It can be that there's revelations coming to bear with regards to a marriage. For some of you that are married, for some of you that are in long-term business uh, partnerships, for those of you that are in long-term partnerships, whether it's marital, business, or other, it, it could really be that something comes to light that is going to instigate getting to the truth of the matter with regards to something that ultimately is aiding you in your process of new emotionally, uh, new emotional stability, new emotional security, uh, new clarity here. Notice how Pallas Athena and Neptune are both at 22 degrees. This is in the fourth house. Inside of yourself, in your emotional foundations, there is a real capacity here naturally encoded in this process over the next six months to merge because it already is merged. The merging of your Neptune, your higher Neptunian function, which is your spiritual clarity, which is your capacity to see into the etheric and understand the organizing principles within the field. For you to see truth, not through ideologies and not through dogmas, not through what you were taught, but for you to see clearly what is truth, natural law, okay? So, and by the way, you can see that this Mars is trining these points here. So this is beautiful because the empowerment of Pallas Athena, the goddess Athena, this is the empowered feminine here, goddess of wisdom, goddess of war. There's the, uh, the, the empowered self, which is standing in a higher wisdom, a higher knowledge, a higher holistic viewpoint, yes? And this higher viewpoint that is something that you desire. For a lot of you, you're just naturally desiring to get clean, clear, empowered, embodied, and to move in the direction of greater truth, greater empowerment, greater uh, metaphysical realities. You know, the metaphysical realm is eighth house, Scorpio, Pluto. So you, your work as a healer and a metaphysician, for some of you, that's also indicated. Transformation of money and career is driving a new uh, metaphysical work. Do you understand? So a lot of you, this is going to apply in that way as well. So, yeah, there's a lot here. The last thing that I'll talk about is um, the sun, uh, Sedna, excuse me, uh, Black Moon Lilith, Sedna, both at 28 degrees, okay? Uranus and Ceres. These are all in the sixth house, ruled by Taurus and Venus. This is about making money, doing work that you love, that you value. This is about doing work that you love and value. You can see that Venus is up here in Gemini. It's in the seventh house. North node, seventh. Venus, Mercury, seventh house. This is about valuing people more, valuing communications with people more, wanting to have more fun, have more social activity during this time frame, right? People have been locked up. People have been more separated. And so this is a time of connection, networking, communicating, uh, loving each other. You know, this is about loving and communicating with people, right? But it requires that North Node obligates a new open-mindedness about actually listening to what the other says, right? This can come from a very kind of dogmatic position. The viewpoint can be, oh, I know the truth. Here, the growth is, I don't know the truth. What is your truth? I'm willing to see your perspective. I'm willing to hear it, listen to it, etc. So the growth here is huge. But then we have all of these planetary functions, including the five degree sun in Gemini. Um, and of course, the sun is really on that descendant point, but it, it's... It is on the descendant point, okay? But uh, Lilith, Sedna, Uranus, and Ceres are all in Taurus in the sixth house. So this is about an evolution happening with work 
an evolution happening for some of you with your health. Now, what this indicates is that there can be some fear dynamics that come up. In other words, clarity that comes, some revelation that is occurring is going to impact a lot of people emotionally. So it's going to, it's going to scare some people. There might be some fear that some people are feeling. And that fear, um, what was I going to say about that exactly? I don't know, you know, it's funny, I lost my train there, everybody, my train of thought. What I was going to say, I think, is about the, this belief system here that is being challenged, that challenges on an emotionally attached, in an emotionally attached way. So in other words, people, what people believe, people hold on to emotionally. It means something to them. You know, it's very personal. And as this is happening, it can create levels of fear. And that fear, this is what I was going to say, can catalyze issues with the body system, right? Because as we operate within ourselves, so the body responds. So if you have fear activated because of whatever is happening now, this month, and over the next six months, you might find that your body, your physical health, sixth house, has something that emerges. Something sudden could occur. What you need to understand is this is something that you have the capacity to evolve. In fact, the evolution, Uranus, of your health is indicated. What is it? What's your connection to food? You know, this is ruled by uh, Taurus. So what, what food are you imbibing? How honest are you about what you're imbibing? What are you allowing into your system? What are you consuming? Drink, uh, things, food, information. What are the things that you're valuing that you're consuming? And how is that activating various responses in the body system? First of all, what you're consuming is going to be directly correlated to any kind of a fear that might be you know, catalyzed within some of you. So you have to be willing to acknowledge that. Yeah, I'm really afraid. I'm eating a lot of whatever, sugar, fat, you know, whatever it is. I'm drinking a lot, whatever it might be. Um, but, but I will share with you that it's very indicated here that Uranus is asking you to evolve your health, your diet, your movement. You must do it. There's an obligation here to do it. And it's actually connected here to a social component with people. So for example, exercising with people or doing the new um, lifestyle uh, eating change with other people. You might want to go raw vegan. So you might want to find others that are doing it. Do you understand? There's a correlation here. So evolution with regards to your health is indicated. Also evolution with your work. Okay. There's also, by the way, a desire to have more freedom in your schedule. So you might not want to work quite so hard. You might not want to work so many days of the week. Do you understand? Definitely indicated here. Series can show where you're going to flip on and flip off. You know, people have different analyses of series. Series is, you know, the goddess of harvest and abundance here. Um, but series can also shut down. So I find, I found it again and again. It's a pattern that I see very clearly. Series shows us where we will flow sometimes, and then we will shut down the flow at other times. Here, it has to do with your health, your mindfulness to your health and the evolution of your health, but also the shutdown can be with regards to your work or your service, the value that you give yourself. Oh yes, the work that I'm doing is valuable. The, the work that I'm doing is not valuable. So you might shut on and off your sense of self-worth or your idea of self-worth as it relates to your service that you're providing for people. So there's work, there's inner inquiry to do with regards to these processes as well, everybody. Lilith and Sedna are still conjunct here at 28 degrees. Um, so there is some level of um, fear to attend to something. There can be... Uh, a fear that you will be discounted, denied, or ignored in the service that you bring forward for people. For some of you, you are evolving your work and you are going to be doing something new. 
Do you understand? So this can instigate a bit of fear. You're going to have to confront the fear. What is the fear about? So you'll evolve into the new career. You'll develop the new business and what? They won't see you. They won't acknowledge you. There's no feedback. There's no this. There's no that. What is your story about it? What is the fear? My guidance to you is identify the fear. Write it down and then identify what that means. So if the fear is, um, I won't make enough money, okay, because that's here, what does that mean? And you can say, well, Aaron, it's obvious what that means, but not really. It's going to be specific for you, so write it down. What does no money mean? Does it mean starving? Does it mean being homeless? What does it mean? So write it down. Start to acknowledge what the fears are because ultimately you're going to have to uh, address those. In fact, there's a requirement to do so. You know, that Uranus is still squaring, as it will throughout this year, Saturn. So here it's about third house of the mind and the Uranus in the sixth, which is about health and work, service, etc., etc. So the pattern of your life here that has to evolve is connected to the maturation of thoughts and mind. How is it that you're identifying things? What's the language that you're using? What words, what language, what words, what tone, what intonation? What are the roots of the words that you're using? An evolution, a maturation of the language that you're using when you talk to yourself, when you talk out loud, when you talk to other people, this is indicated here. I'm going to leave it there, everybody. Um, yeah, huge stuff. I mean, gosh, let me turn off my highlighter. For those of you interested in receiving your natal analysis, um, oh, look, it's 144. Delightful. Um, you can look below. The link is below. Uh, an additional note, I'm going to be posting this now, which is Sunday the 23rd, up until 8 o'clock tonight. So just for the next several hours, there's a sale on the 20. 21 in-depth comprehensive analysis for those that want to take advantage of the sale that listen to this video right away go ahead and take advantage of that the link is also below the video okay everybody uh, subscribe and ring the bell of course and I send you lots of love I'll talk to you soon bye-bye